Hello everyone, welcome back to Zero Labs. Today is still Sunday, December 11th, 2016. I am still Mark Brash, your host, and this is now the update on the induction heater for the non-Julian magnetostriction experiment. So as you can see, and if you have been following along on my live broadcast, as you already know, uh, this is the induction heater assembly. We'll take you, take you for a quick walkthrough. The first, the first thing I'd like to show you is the, uh, the, the uh, aquarium pump that I purchased to uh, pump cooled water through the induction heater coil, the working coil. Um, this little pump is rated at 600 liters per hour. That uh, is roughly um, 160 gallons per hour, or roughly three gallons per minute, or two and a half gallons per minute. That's at no restriction, and through, the, uh, through all the tubing that I've got, it's probably closer to about one gallon per minute, which is more than enough circulation to keep the coil cool. Moving on, we, we come to the, uh, the bank of uh, capacitors for the parallel resonant tank circuit. Um, I special ordered these capacitors from Mauser Electronics. They are one microfarads each, so 10 of them in parallel is 10 microfarads total. Each, uh, each capacitor is rated for 1200 volts DC, 500 volts AC, and has an internal equivalent series resistance of five milliohms. That's 0 0.005 ohms. So 10 of these in parallel is 0.5 milliohms or 0 0.0005 ohms. This is a very high Q uh, parallel resonant tank circuit. The coil is five turns of 3 8 inch copper pipe. It uh, is wound on a two inch form, and it is about two and a half inches long. It represents 0 0.85 microhenries. The resonant frequency of this entire circuit is 54 kilohertz. Next, we look at the, uh, the driver circuit. This driver circuit is called a zero voltage switch driver. Um, I, you'll notice I did not use the center tapped coil design, so this design uses two filter chokes instead of one filter choke, and it works extremely well. I, um, I put a terminal block on the side to attach all of my heavy duty wiring to, and if you look behind the circuit board, you can see where I've mounted the power MOSFETs to the back side of the heat sink underneath the standoffs that hold the board in place and the whole assembly is cooled by a, a little boxer fan that is receiving its 12 volts from the uh, regulator on the circuit board. Idling, the circuit draws about three and a half amps at 14 and a half volts. And even idling, the, uh, the, the 3 8 inch copper tubing gets quite hot, too hot to touch. Um, this is the waveform that it produces on the oscilloscope. You'll notice that my scope is set to 10 volts per division, 10 microseconds per division. So you can see this is in the range of 50 kilohertz oscillation. And my peak voltage is about 48 volts, which is roughly three times the input voltage. And that's basically what was uh, stated in all of the literature that I found on the circuit is that you're going to see a peak voltage approximately three times your input voltage and your power MOSFETs must be rated accordingly. Now, I am now using uh, some power MOSFETs that I had in my spare bin. They are rated at 55 volts maximum 
drain to source voltage. Uh, they have a very low on resistance. They're only, um, I think, uh, 10, 9 or 10 milliohms uh, on resistance. So they're very good quality power MOSFETs, but they are in a TO220 style case and they only have a 55 volt rating. So with 14 and a half volts, that's the most I can push these uh, with, with the uh, present voltage that I've got. Uh, if I want to go any higher than that, I want to run this circuit at about 30 volts. I need to special order now, or I have on order, some uh, power MOSFETs. So I bought 10 power MOSFETs from Mauser, and uh, I also need to get, once, once I have the, uh, have the circuit working at full potential, then I'm going to have to buy an uh, infrared pyrometer and some uh, crucibles to melt my alloys in, etc., etc. Costs are starting to mount up pretty quickly. $50 for the capacitors. $50 for the, the power MOSFETs. It's going to be roughly $50 for the infrared thermometer. Um, I've already spent uh, maybe another $50 in, in loose hardware for the, uh, the fittings and the, and the copper pipe. I'm into this for a couple hundred bucks already, and uh, the, uh, the costs are still mounting. Um, I don't usually ask for help, but I'm going to ask if you, if you, want, to, if you want to help out. I could, I'd really appreciate it. Um, so I'm uh, going to leave a link in the description below where you can throw some loose change at the, at the experiment and hopefully we can together make this thing a reality. The next step in the build is of course going to be to make the power supply that I need to, to drive this to a higher power level than what I've got right now. Once I get the new power MOSFETs in place, then I can feed more voltage to it. If I'm feeding uh, 40 volts to it, I'm going to see probably a maximum of 120 volts, and uh, the power MOSFETs that I've, that I've purchased are rated for 200 volts, 130 amps each. So we should have more than enough headroom on the, on the uh, power circuitry. Uh, it will be powered from 240 volts, not 120, so that I uh, can keep the amount of current draw on the AC mains uh, to, a, to a minimum. I am shooting for approximately two kilowatts of peak output power from this circuit. And of course, no update video would be complete with it without at least a small demonstration of what this device can do. So here is what this device can do. Uh, I'm heating a quarter inch by four and a half inch steel lag bolt inside the induction coil. If you look at my uh, my regulated power supply, you'll see that the current jumps from 3.5 amps to almost 10 amps, roughly 9 amps of current going into the circuit, still at 14.5 volts, and with just that 9 amps at 14.5 volts, less than 150 watts, I'm able to do this. Now, wasn't that fun? <laughs> so this is getting pretty exciting pretty fast. And uh, we're moving, moving ahead as rapidly as I can now because I'm very excited about the experiment. I can't wait to see the results of creating the alloy to uh, actually perform the end experiment that all of this is a precursor for. Thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, uh, I hope you are enjoying this series, this ongoing series. As always, please rate, share, comment, and subscribe to my videos. And peace, everyone. This is a real this is a real variac. This thing is rated for about 20 amps, although it is only rated for 120 volts. Hmm. Maybe I won't be using this after all. Have to think about that. I really want to use this, but oh well.
Oh man, how long has my microphone been off? When bending over the bench. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I would be so pissed off. Wow, wow. And that's going to make a good blooper, won't it? Yeah, it will. <laughs> okay. <laughs>